Hey folks, Retro Paul here, or Professor Retro. I'd just like to thank you for supporting the channel and 100 subs. So I hope you enjoy this special episode of The Rise and Fall with The Rise and Fall of Mega Man Universe. Hey there gamers and pixel pushers, welcome back to the channel where we dissect the mysteries of the gaming universe. I'm your host, Professor Retro, and today we're diving deep into the murky waters of a game that vanished faster than a power-up in a speedrun. That's right, buckle up, because we're talking about the legend of Mega Man Universe. The year is 2010, and Kenji Inafume and Capcom decide to create another entry into the hit Mega Man franchise with a game that, in the words of Inafume, play the Mega Man of your dreams, allowing players to create their own levels or altering levels of other Mega Man games using assets from past Mega Man games, much like Super Mario Maker. The game was going to allow players to create their own levels and design their own Mega Man, as well as feature other characters from the franchise, as well as other Capcom games, such as Ryu from Street Fighter and Arthur from Ghost and Goblins. It was going to be released for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Development for it began in March of 2010, and Capcom then registered the trademark on April 27th that same year, and on July 16th, a stop-motion trailer was released. Kenji and the team wanted to try to preserve the original look and feel of the old 8-bit version of Mega Man, especially Mega Man 2. The first original gameplay trailer was released on September 2nd that year, and Capcom then revealed the level and character editors. The first tech demo of Mega Man Universe was on October 10th, 2010. However, the reception for the game was awful, with people not liking the controls and the look of the game itself. With the poor reception at New York City Comic Con and the Tokyo Game Show, any of you then felt the need to focus on those issues. However, just 10 days after the New York City Comic Con showing, Kenji Inafume announced that he was resigning from Capcom. However, Capcom was still going to continue with developing the game, focusing on fixing the controls and our style of the game which were the two core issues that came up. Sadly, on March 11th, 2010, Capcom officially announced the Mega Man Universe was cancelled, setting various issues and reasons as to why it was cancelled, but there's more to it than just various reasons. No one could say that Kenji Inafune's departure from Capcom was one of the main reasons for it being cancelled. According to the sources, at the start of the game, it wasn't even clear as to what the game was going to be. One day it was going to be a remake of Mega Man 2, and the next Kenji said it was going to be a whole other platform altogether. The negative reviews of both New York City Comic Con and the Tokyo Game Show in 2010 caused both IGN and Destructoid to hate the game altogether, and so did the fans, and of whom then decided to go back to square one and focus on the two main issues. In the fall of 2010, it was decided that the game was going to have an online co-op play as well, However, what often sounds great in paper doesn't always work out, and Influen decided they wanted to outsource implementing of it, but the company he chose to use had no concept on how to do that, let alone never worked with home consoles and online games. Soon the production started to slowly flounder, and the team that was used to try to get the multiplayer working wanted to scrap it, but it was already too late. One source had played it updated Xbox 3 build of the game, saying that the graphics were better, but the performance was still poor. Now, you would think that this is where I would end this, but there was a slight glimmer of hope that Mega Man Universe was still going to happen, just not in the way it was originally planned. In February 2011, Capcom decided to move away from the PlayStation 3 and Xbox versions, and move to making it for iPhone and iPad iOS instead. This would get rid of the whole level building aspect and be more of a Mega Man 2 remake, with the character builder aspect added. Sadly, the idea of the iOS version was just a pipe dream, and that no one at Capcom was even working on that. Thus, Mega Man Universe was officially dead. However, on July 15th of 2017, an indie game developer going by the name of Wrecking Programs released a fan version of Mega Man Universe calling it Mega Man Maker, which gives us what the original concept of Capcom might have looked like, and it was playable. You can find it by searching Mega Man Maker, and you'll be able to download it and try it. However, it is only for PCs. Well, after researching and reading a lot about this, I've come to this conclusion. Mega Man Universe was a massively ambitious game, and due to no backing and poor management, it caused the ultimate demise, and thus buried in the history of Capcom as a whole. 
I really wish this would have been finished and released. Being a fan of the Mega Man franchise since I first played Mega Man 2 back in the old NES days, this would have been a great addition to it. I do like the idea that a fan-made version was made in 2017, and it looks really good and fun to play. Would you have liked to see this come out? If so, let me know in the comments. I'm Retro Paul, or Professor Retro, saying peace out and stay frosty.